He thought I would do the whispers of Lord Ganesha again today. Ganesha is, for those that don't know Hinduism, Ganesha is the remover of obstacles. So I'm going to pick three cards and we'll see where we go this morning. What type of talk is going to be coming forward this morning. First card out is Prosperity. Second card out is Revelation. And third card out is Reflection. Okay, Reflection, Revelation, and Prosperity. Okay. So, if one sees themselves as prosperous, doesn't always, again, doesn't always have to do with financial means and monetary, monetary things, um, okay. It has to do also with your prosperous if you are grounded, that you're happy, that you have, you know, a roof over your head, you have food in your stomach, you have enough to sustain you. You can also have a pros prosperous, uh, a prosperity of getting revelations, okay? Getting knowledge, getting wisdom. Now, how does this wealth of wisdom come? The wealth of wisdom comes by reflection, by reflection. And that's one thing that comes, you know, uh, again, I have to talk about the Kundalini path because that was my path through. Um, Kundalini, again, brings up all of your fears and all of your dramas to be reflected on, to be looked at, to be challenged, to see the illusion of it, to be broken through, okay? And this is why it can be a dangerous path, such as what happened to the person that I know. They tried to take their life because when these things start emerging, when these things start emerging, um, these projections of mind, they can be very real feeling, very, very real, okay? Um, it feels like demons, like, you know, and you have to, again, you can't run, uh, you can't fight it. If you fight it, if you run from it, then what happens is it feeds it. It's an energetic thing. It gets fed. You give it more and more substance. The more you try to run away from it, the more you try to fight it, the more substance you are giving it and the more real it feels, okay? So, you know, when you go through, again, Kundalini, at the end, you know the mind inside and outside, okay, what it is, how it's capable of making these projections very strong. I, everything in quantum is done by mind. Mind puts that energy out, and this is how quantum works, okay? So again, you know, part of the journey, the big part of the journey is sitting and reflecting what's coming forward, not taking it on, okay? Not letting it run your mind into hamster wheels, okay? Seeing it, questioning it, looking at it in a deep level, and dismissing it, okay? This is why they have the uh, thing in the little Buddha, the scene where Buddha's sitting there and it's just the last part of the journey. 
and he has the fireballs being thrown at him. He has, you know, armies charging at him. They're, th you know, shooting the arrows at him, and he sits there impervious, just seeing it, reflecting it, but not buying into it, okay? Not giving it reality, okay? Now, all of these things that are coming up as projections of mind, okay? All of these things that are projections of mind, they have no substance. They have no substance other than what you are giving it. It cannot live out there on its own by itself. It's only your attention to it which makes it feel real because it generates an emotion in the body it generates and then that generates a chemical reaction in the body and if you are body centered then it feels as if it is real okay so that's the way that works you know and this takes again sitting in reflection in that still center watching the drama, questioning it, not buying into it, okay? Eventually, one sees if you don't feed it, if you are sitting and observing it without fighting it, without loving it, without giving it energy, eventually this dissipates because it has nothing to feed on, okay? If it has nothing to feed on, it gets starved out of existence, okay? Because everything is created by energy, okay? And we are sort of like a, how do you want to say it, like an energy, uh, we're like a moving energy station, and again, this is why the mind is like quantum, quantum physics, where the mind is going. You know, it's like that thing uh, that they, they had that experiment where they had these, what was it, molecules or something. And the, the thing that came out was when the scientists knew what it was going to do, that's what it did. Now, every scientist had a different idea about what it was going to do. Okay, so it was uh, moved by the scientist's mind, the, their determined action of what was going to take place. That's how quantum works. You put that energy out there, and then if you are not negating it, if you are not uh, skewing it, this is how manifestation takes place, okay? Um, but again, the journey is about reflection. Being like a mirror, you're reflecting what's there. You know, this is what you'll find out too. If you are an adept, if you are an empath, then you'll find that you'll be standing in a line and people will come up and tell you their whole life story. And then they'll say, well, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I never tell anybody. And you'll have this happen over and over and over again. Okay. Because they feel that there is that uh, opening. An empath energetically is connected. Okay. They're connecting more than they know Okay, and so people open up. They feel like there is this opening there, okay, and all this stuff spills out. Okay, so if you are an empath, this will continue to happen, okay? Uh, don't be surprised at it, okay? The other thing that happens as you go further and this energy, if you're an energetic being and this energy is amping up, and you're vibrating at a high level, you'll find you become a mirror. You will become a mirror. And so whatever something, somebody is trying to throw something back at you, it will be reflected back to them. 
and you'll see them just going crazy for no, for you think no reason. Well, whatever that's that's being thrown at you, it goes back on them tenfold. There's nothing you do, but this is why you see trolls that get crazy. You know when they try to, <laughs> when they try to come at you, they get crazier and crazier because their their stuff just if you're not taking it in. And this is, again, the way black magic works. If you are not taking it in, it gets reflected back to them because they are projecting that out at you. When you are, again, in that still place, you're not buying into their drama. You're not taking it in. It goes back on them tenfold. There's nothing you need to do to have that happen. It happens. It's a... Uh, it's kind of a law of the universe, okay? It goes back on them tenfold. So you'll see those around you, whatever it is they're projecting. If it's love, it comes back on them tenfold. If it's hate, it comes back on them tenfold. Again, and there's nothing that you are doing. You are like a generator, a mirror that mirrors back their things to them for it to be seen, to be encountered, for them to encounter it. So that's what happens if you are a high level being that uh, the, the uh, energy is vibrating at a very, very high level. These are the things that take place. If it's a little lower level, you get the empath. Okay, when that energy starts moving up and it's going at a very high speed, you become like a mirror, okay? These things keep getting reflected back to whoever is sending it, okay? So that's the way that works, okay? <laughs> it's a natural law of the universe. It's not something that you have to attempt to do, okay? This is what happens. So I'm going to leave this here. Hopefully somebody's gotten something out of it of benefit for your own journey. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave this here for now. <laughs> I'm trying to get the box open. <laughs> I, go, I can tell you the laws of the universe. I just can't get a box open, okay? <laughs> oh, mercy. Sometimes you just have to laugh, you know, craziness. Uh, anyway, so thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Let me know if you've enjoyed the whispers of Ganesha. Um, things being put out. Uh, hopefully, hopefully people are getting something from this. Um, Okay, I'm going to read something out of my Kundalini from Hell to Heaven. Okay, I'm going to read what God, about God, God. God only exists within aspects of through the Maya realm of this world. Beyond this world, that which is called God has no such aspects nor any division. God is beyond any division, and all that is seen as creation is only a division of God. God is all that exists. God is that spark of light, which is life itself. It is only mind of man which creates division and sees not the truth. This world is here for God to play and for us to realize we are not this ego form of body which comes and goes. We are spirit in essence, which is eternal. And all in this world of the flesh 
and all in this world is of the flesh which comes and goes. Nothing in the Maya realm is eternal. It is all in the constant flux and change. Realization is seeing this world for what it is and knowing the eternal, changeless, formless, which holds the Maya realm, yet which is beyond and is not touched by it. Do not despair. This is the realm of experience but we are beyond all such experience. When you drop the ego of division, all that exists is God. See beyond the limited forms of ego and dogma in all its forms. So I know that's a bit confusing because God is inherent in everything seen here. But what I'm speaking of is the phenomenal existence that which appears to have form and limitation. In its absolute essence, it is eternal, unchanging is. The changing dynamic that is seen is the illusionary substance created by these uh, the energy and its fluctuations and how quickly it is, uh, it is vibrating. The more solid something appears to be, the more slow the vibration is. The lighter something is, the quicker the vibration is. The more of less substance it is, the quicker that vibration is, okay? So that's why we say that this world is illusion because at the center of it, because it's in change, in flux, all of that is in change, in flux. But that which empowers it, allows it to be, is unchanging, eternal. And none of the happenings in this transient realm affect this, affect this primal is. Okay, it's untouched by any of the things that happen. It's always pure, always pure, okay? No matter what takes place in this changing existence. This is why, you know, it, in Maya, one is the suffering, the suffering persona when liberation happens, it becomes the play of God because there is no longer this feeling of being something separate, which is searching for, trying to grasp, trying to come into alignment with God. When all of that falls, deconstruction, the only thing one knows is that divine is ever present. You could never, ever, ever have been separated from it because that's all one is. And the transient story, okay, was a transient story, nothing more. You are that divine, eternal is, which no encounter, no experience, in this transitory realm can touch. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for dancing with Ganesh this morning. <laughs> and hopefully everyone has a great day. See you online. Aho, namaste, whichever you prefer. Enjoy, have a good day.